Oh yeah, that is beautiful. I'm just about ready to start assembling this uh, closed staircase section, but before I can start putting things together, I still need to do the cope cut on the ends of my treads for the nosing to pass through. Remember, a cope joint is just a pass-through joint. Usually when co coping, people think of crown molding or baseboard, but all we're doing in those situations is creating a pass-through joint, and in this case, we're gonna do that exact same thing with the stair nosing. Well guys, it is finally time to start assembling this boxed staircase. This is a closed both sides section of house staircase. So I'm ready to start putting my risers and treads in and get this thing uh, put together. But before we do that, I've done quite a bit of prep on this and I'll show you um, some things to consider doing before you begin the assembly process. First thing you'll notice is all along here, I've pre-drilled holes with an eighth inch bit. That should help me whenever I screw in from the backside into the treads and risers. Um, makes it a lot easier, obviously, to do that now before we start trying to put anything together. So then over here, I have my treads and risers. Uh, first thing you'll probably notice is on these risers, I have pocket hole screwed the top edge. That way we can have those pocket holes going up into the tread above it. Um, with that, pocket screws sometimes have a tendency to want to push your workpiece around. To combat that on the nosing, I've scribed a line at two inches the whole way across, inch and a quarter plus a three quarter inch riser, and that should help me keep things aligned. Um, the other thing you'll notice now that these risers have fallen over is that there are holes also pre-drilled a half inch down. Everything lines up right above where the pocket holes are, and that's where I'll be screwing from the riser in to the back side of the tread. So that's all prepped and ready to go also. I've got my nosing coped at a quarter inch. Hopefully that works out well. Got a bucket of shims there. Um, PL Premium, we'll be using that. And drill, driver setup, and screws. I'm gonna try and use two and a half inch GRK screws these have always worked really well for me. They drive really nice and the point uh, will help avoid splitting of the tread, hopefully. Um, also, tried to keep all of my pilot holes back from the edge far enough also to combat splitting. So next thing to think about is how are we gonna assemble this thing? And as a general rule, you're probably gonna assemble it upside down with the underside of the staircase facing up that way you can pound your wedges in and all that good stuff. So it would be like so, and you could slide your treads and risers into place like that. Um, I'd like to try and get some adhesive in these mortises. And the issue with that is as you try and kind of slide things into place, you can make a mess really fast. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it flat like this and I'm gonna put all my treads in first and I'm gonna stick these in vertically and screw them from the underside. That way I can put the adhesive in, put the tread in, screw it. I've got adhesive in there. Then I'll take the other skirt board, put it on top, do the same thing with adhesive where the treads go, screw that, then I'll lay it down flat and start working the risers in and wedges 
and I'll also look at the, the whole stair as it relates to my workbench to ensure that I'm keeping it square. Um, that's a key thing is to keep checking to make sure that it's square and you're not creating this oblong thing. So that's the game plan. We'll see how it goes. All right, so here goes nothing. Give myself a length and feel. Now all I do is need to ensure that I'm lining up the back side with this mortise, which is going to be the front of the riser. Alrighty, we're making progress. It's getting interesting. So I'm gonna put a little bit of PL in each of these mortises for the tread. And I'm being really uh, careful that I'm not overdoing the PL. Don't want it squeezing out, making a mess. Don't want it to uh, hinder everything from coming together tightly. So, Key thing is just want to have a little bit of a bond so that uh, nothing will potentially squeak. There's that. All right, at this point, I need to put this down on the table with the backside facing up. Which might prove a little bit interesting here. At this point, what I've done is I've laid the stair, I've got the treads in, I've laid it flat on the table, and I lined up one outside edge of the skirt board with my workbench, and then I checked the ends here to see if we're running square, and it actually looks really good. So I don't think we're gonna have any issues with it not squaring up, um, so that's always a good thing. It's going together pretty good. I've got all the treads in now and i've put pl in the cavity where the edge is going to where the wedge is going to go insert the wedge and then hammer it hard in and uh, that just tightens everything up um, any of the cupping that might be in the tread that driving that wedge hard takes care of that so i'm looking at the looking at the top which is looking at the underside here and everything's coming together really well so ready to start putting in risers at this point. And if you didn't pick up on it whenever I was assembling these treads in place, I was using just a piece of wedge as a straight edge and um, to get my tread in position in this horizon, all I was doing was sticking a piece of wedge in the mortise and I just had to line up the back of the tread with that because that will be the front of the riser which will screw into the back of the tread right there. So a couple considerations before we start putting the risers in. Uh, a tip that my buddy Trey gave me was to cut your risers a 32nd to a 16th of an inch short. 
um, shorter than the treads. If you try to make them the exact same length, good chance you might run into issues, especially if by chance your riser happened to be a hair longer than your tread. We've screwed these treads in with three GRK screws on each side, so they're not going to move apart any. And at this point, they're wedged in there also. So nothing's moving from that standpoint. So if you get a riser in part way and it ain't going, that's going to be a bad deal. So undercutting those risers um, a 32nd to a 16th is ideal. Hopefully I've undercut them enough. Otherwise, um, I'll be living the nightmare pretty soon. The other consideration that, I, that I'm thinking about right now is what adhesive to use or what glue to use. Um, now, at this point, I have to slide the riser in and being that PL Premium is thicker, that could turn into a real mess. Um, and then also, I won't be using any Scotia molding on the underside of the nosing on this install. So everything needs to be a very clean connection between the riser and the tread. With PL Premium, it's a, very, it's a much thicker viscosity than wood glue, so that could potentially keep things from coming together tight or just make for some nasty squeeze out. Um, so I'm leaning towards just using regular tight bond wood glue, PVA wood glue on these risers. And then of course they'll be pocket screwed also. Okay, so here we go, getting started putting risers in. I'm gonna go ahead, go light glue where this riser will go up in to the underside of my tread. I don't want squeeze out here. Then I might just do a dab on the sides. I really don't think we're going to be screwing from the outside of the skirt board. So glue's not even that big a deal right here, probably. So again, being a 32nd to a 16th undersize is going to really help matters a lot on this. And next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and PL my wedge joint area and I'm going to go ahead and drive these wedges in because there's so much pressure whenever you do this that it'll kind of force itself tight into the tread. Where's my hammer? Oops. Now, I had scribed that line onto the underside of the tread previously, and that is visible right now. That's no bueno. So biggest thing you have to watch with using pocket hole screws is they do tend to want to wander. And that's why I scribed that line onto the underside of my tread so that I could sure that I stay straight and keep a consistent nosing overhang. Um, something that my buddy Trey does is actually he will fasten glue blocks to the backside top of the riser in advance before assembling the staircase and then all you have to do is screw straight into the tread so not using pocket hole screws in that case i don't um obviously that's from somebody with 20 plus years experience building stairs and this is how i'm doing it so um, keith matthewson in his youtube videos he also was using just pocket hole screws for his riser to tread connection. So a lot of different ways to skin this cat. 
for this one, I'm just going to pocket hole screw it because it's a closed staircase and it's going to be plenty strong. And this is just a little bit easier for me. Well, hard push here this evening. It's about 9.30 now. I told myself this morning I was getting this done today, no matter what, because um, it's been slow going trying to do this and make YouTube videos of the whole process at the same time. But I think everything came together pretty well. Oof. I see right now I forgot to screw a row here. I'll do that real quick. Um, but pocket hole screws into the bottom of the tread and then same thing, just using washer head screws from the riser into the tread with glue, wedges, PL, all that good stuff. Screwed on the outside with uh, GRK, two and a half inch screws. So this sucker should be pretty solid. I'll give you a quick look here before I flip it over and take a look at what the finish side will be. You can see PL with the wedges. Used my pencil line as a guide. That worked out really well. Um, I did find that the pocket hole screws were wanting to pull in. So what I did was I put a screw part way into the riser here, pulled it out with the claw of my hammer, and then drove that middle one in first. And that helped ensure that everything stayed nice and straight. Time to come up with some creative way to flip this over. I think I'm actually gonna try and rotate it. Oh yeah, that is beautiful. That is looking good. I'm very happy. Um, nothing major so far, as long as it fits where it's supposed to go. But look at these nosings. Remember how we're coping those in? That's a pass-through joint. Look at how invisible that is. It looks great. Front side. The one thing, I don't know if you can see it, that I screwed up, look down in the corners, router tear out. Thankfully that's paint grade, so I'll be able to fix that with some putty, but that's definitely a lesson learned to watch that. And if you look over here on this side, I didn't have any of that because of the direction that I was running the router with the template, all those corners look great. So I hope you guys enjoyed hanging with me on this one. This was essentially the warm up staircase. I've got three more of these to do, except one side will be an open, uh, it, what do you call it? Open stringer, uh, mitered skirt board type deal. So we won't, it won't be as easy, um, but hopefully it comes together good also. I'm sure it will, uh, but that's next on the list.